Well, good evening, all. Appreciate you coming in here this evening or watching this on the recast that will be on the MDA website. I am Todd Christie, Speaker of the House here for the Michigan Dental Association. And this is for our delegate and alternate uh, training session that we're doing because we want to make sure preparing you for a successful MDA House of Delegates. So first thing, there is where we're going to be, DeVos Place in Grand Rapids, Michigan, coming up here on May 4th and May 6th for our uh, House of Delegates. Some of you might get in the third and stay through whenever you want to stay through. It'll be a fun weekend in Grand Rapids. And just so you know, guess what? It is 38 days away from as we film this here today uh, and getting ready for our meeting. So I want to talk about, and that's why I did the survey before and asked our House of Delegates members what they wanted to see uh, from a number of topics that I worked on or could develop for you. And so here's what we got on the, on the docket for tonight. Uh, one, reference committee, uh, and this is a big thing for me, is the reference committee you'll learn more about and how it keeps the MDA and the House of Delegates moving. Clear and effective testimony. I know from talking to Sue ahead of time, Sue, this is where you craft all that stuff when people want their talking points and what they're going to bring up. And last, the big thing that I believe is how you start the meeting the right way is having an engaged pre-caucus meeting uh, within your groups and preparing for your success there. And last, I'll throw a whole bunch of information there at the end so you know what's coming up. So let's go ahead and get moving here. Uh, reference committee, and that keeps the house moving. Let's talk about the reference committee. So the uh, primary duty of what the reference committee is to recommend the House of Delegates, and this is the official one, the, hold on one moment here. There we go. Uh, an appropriate course of action or matters. So this one has the ability to help save hours of time on the floor of the House during deliberations. Now, a reference committee uh, hearing for the 2023 House of Delegates will follow the candidate forum in the first meeting of the House. So when we start off that day, and you'll see this at the end, we'll start off at 8.30 in the morning for the first meeting of the House. Uh, and then we'll also have the candidate forum after that. And then we'll move into the um, uh, the reference committee at the end of that. Probably around noon is what we're estimating, maybe a little bit later. It all depends on how everything goes. So what this hearing does, and that's a reference committee hearing. So the reference committee hearing provides opportunities for all association members to present their views on proposed resolutions and association reports. So as you've been getting emails coming in that has a link to everything that we have on the MDA website, that is all the reports and the resolutions, everything that you're gonna have before you at the house. So during this hearing, that's when that group is there uh, for the association members to say, ask questions about any of it, ask questions about resolutions, offer comments or perspective, express their opinions, um, as well the association officers, the committee chairs or staff members will probably be present to answer any of those with relevant information. So that's where you can ask a question about a resolution or give a statement. So the big thing about that hearing is it allows all members with questions or statements to speak. All testimony is just testimony. There are no motions made during this meeting whatsoever. This is not like I'm running it. We have a reference committee chairperson and we have a reference committee members. So they are listening to that. Typically, testimony is limited to two minutes until all who wish have thought to speak have presented. So we roll through that and the rules will be presented and they'll read those off at that meeting. But typically it's two minutes and you get your two minutes and every else gets their two minutes and they'll establish, the reference committee can establish and we have a meeting with them coming up here in about two and a half weeks to go through and establish what rules they want to follow within that. But typically, if there's one through five speak, and if anybody else wants to go to a microphone after that, they may, but we want to let everyone have their voice be heard. So the big thing of the reference committee is to listen objectively. Uh, the one thing it does is it bears the weights in, of the deliberations of the House of Delegates. Objectively evaluate the resolutions and the testimony provided and decide how to dispose of the resolutions. Again, objectivity is the most important thing in that we want to treat all fairly. And Michelle, are those coming through or not? Yes. Okay, good. Just want to make sure. Thank you. So uh, after the hearing concludes, the reference committee goes into a dark room. No, they don't. They go into a room and it's called executive session, which means they go in there and talk about what they just heard. So they will go and meet in there. They will have available to them Michelle Nichols Cruz. Uh, Ginger is in there. I think we have April is in there. We have a number of MDA staffers there to help to help them collate their report. 
but the reference committee is in charge of their report and they put it together for what they recommend from all the resolutions before the house. Um, they review the testimony that is provided and they form its record. The, then the committee goes through and puts its recommendations regarding each of the resolutions to present to the house at the second meeting. So what can happen with every resolution that comes before them? They're gonna to try to decide if they recommend that the house adopt, not adopt, to refer, this would be referred typically to the Board of Trustees, or last, adopt in lieu of. This might mean that they have a resolution, let's say there was a number of ideas that came up and they make they wanna present a, a different resolution that takes that one resolution and adopts it in lieu of, and instead of, is kind of what in, in lieu of is, and I can present more on this when we get in person if we need to. Uh, but that would probably be one that I will talk about when we get in person. Uh, it's a little easier to understand when we show that. Um, but there are four opportunities for what that re uh, reference committee can do. I just still like this picture of this one up in Manistee. Just found something. Sorry. This distract me, not you. So let's go through and move on. Any questions in regards to the reference committee? Actually, here while I'm looking, I'll watch for those if we have any on that. And always you can go through and fire those questions in there. and I'll get those answered for you. And if not, I'll just keep moving. All right, so clear, effective testimony. Get your point across and dazzle the House of Delegates. This is what we want to make sure of. So one thing is when you're providing testimony, how do I always look at it? You've got a headline, you got supporting points, and you got a call to action. This is what you want to get done in your typically two minutes that you have at the microphone. In particular, we'll talk about reference committee, but this also goes for when we're in the House of Delegates as well. So in there, what's a headline, folks? Important things. State your name, where you're from, and your position in regards to the resolution. So Todd Christie, Lakeland Valley, I'm in favor of resolution 10. Okay, there's your headline. So next we move on. What are your supporting points? You know, what resonates with you as your opinion on this resolution? You know, you write it down to begin with. This is something that when we talk about being effective in your pre-caucus, and I know folks are already who brought resolutions, want to speak to their resolutions now, this is what you want to do. Write down what to begin with, the strongest reason first. Discuss it around, talk amongst yourselves, figure this out, reflect on what they heard when you tell them what your strongest reason why you're in favor or opposed to something is. And remember this, people remember stories first, statistics, second, maybe third. You know, you start going through and go into the, all these statistics, people eyes may, gla may glaze over, you never know. But most importantly, you want to go through and figure out what that strongest thing for you is. So that's the second part. Now we move on to the third part, the call to action. Remind them why you're giving the testimony, okay? Ask them to vote yes or vote no for this resolution, or it could be an amendment that's come forward in the House. There's a lot of different things in our voting, and this pertains to each and every one. Now, obviously, if you're getting ready for the second meeting of the House and something has come up and you disagree with it, you can have that written down. But on the fly in the House, something comes up. I am opposed to amending this resolution, and here are my reasons why. Please vote no on uh, this amendment. You could say that. Let's keep it simple. Another good phrase in through here, and I'd love to hear it here. You'll hear it later on here, but me, be mindful of this. Remind them to think as to why. And that will also go back to why you're recommending people vote yes or no in regards to a resolution. Because at the end, you want them to do something at the end of it all. My things always are, and I know I actually we got this when I was in Washington, D.C. for the caucus, uh, for the um, ADA and the ASDA day that we had there was be brief, be bright, and be gone. Two minute window. These are dentist folks. You all know their attention span. It's not always a long one. So be brief be bright, and be gone. So let's go through and take a look at some troublemakers that I know from our board of trustees. And you can listen to what strong and uh, excellent uh, testimony is. Let's go ahead and hear from uh, Vince. Vincent Bonavania. I'm an oral surgeon practicing in East Lansing, Michigan. I'd like to ask you for your support in, to increase Medicaid funding for an anesthesia services. As an oral surgeon, I treat a lot of children and special needs patients that require sedation or general anesthesia to be able to provide their care. Most of the time I can provide this care in my office, but there are times when due to the particular medical history, I cannot provide the care in my office and instead must take them to the hospital 
and treat them in an operating room setting. Most of these patients are covered under Medicaid insurance. Unfortunately, oral surgeons and pediatric dentists that treat these patients that require care in the operating room are having trouble scheduling OR time in hospitals. Hospitals are cutting back and limiting a lot of time slots for our patients, I believe, because of the lack of profit that these cases bring to the hospital because of low Medicaid reimbursement. In other words, hospitals are losing money by allowing me to treat my Medicaid patients at their facility. Because of this situation, there's becoming a backlog of these patients and their treatment is being delayed, all the while their dental health is deteriorating. We need to be vocal on this issue and advocate for these underserved patients. Specifically, the MDA will be lobbying our legislators for increased funding of Medicaid anesthesia services so we can once again provide the desperately needed dental care. Please join me in this effort and reach out to your representatives. When you receive the text to action alert from the MDA on this issue, please act and don't ignore it. Our voices must be heard to affect change. Thank you. All right. So with Vince, we went through all those parts, the headline, the points, the call to action. What do you need to do? And he was giving a specific call to action for reaching out and using our uh, touch the vote to get the information to our senators and to our legislators. So the big part in when you're providing the testimony is delivering to enhance your credibility. Who are you? What are you doing? Why are you there? When you speak, avoiding words like, um, ah, well, you know, those things you want to watch out for. Just or sorry, how many times in our own practices will we talk about minimizing terms? Well, it's just a little decay or sorry. Those things are ones to watch for too. It keeps you credible, keeps you strong as a presenter and what you're doing. Another one that could undermine is this might work, but you know, believe in yourself. Get up there, give your testimony. If you feel that strong and you're going to get up there and speak, go for it. Let them know why you're there. Up talk. So who has ever heard this? And you can throw it in the chat if you heard it, but up talk is where when you finish the sentence and go up, are you asking a question? You need to be making a statement. Keep that level tone. But once you go up, people think you're asking them a question. That's usually when my dogs, if I'm talking to them, their ears perk up and they look around. And there it is. The voice goes up when you're asking the question. And if no question, the voices should go down. So modulating your voice, avoiding those words like, or words or whatever you want to call those of, um, ah, you know, just, sorry, this might not work, but we're doing up talk. Let's go through and take one more bit of testimony here so you can see another really strong example. What would you do with $292,000? You could buy a house, you could buy a Ferrari, maybe even a yacht, or you could follow your dreams of becoming a dentist. Now imagine starting off your career with $292,000 in debt. Well, don't forget to compound that with interest. The Health Policy Institute reports in 2019, the average debt of graduating dentists was $292,000, an amount that has almost doubled in the last 20 years and has been increasing by an inflation adjusted amount of 3.3% annually. Staggering debt has a wide ranging impact on the career choices of our member dentists. It influences where they work, what type of practice they work at, if they become a practice owner and the populations that they serve. And all this contributes to the gap in access to care and rising healthcare costs. The MDA is advocating on behalf of its members to help alleviate the burden of student debt by supporting policies that focus on reducing the cost of dental school tuition, supporting favorable financial policies such as refinancing, reducing interest rates, and increasing tax incentives, and by supporting policies and opportunities that provide loan forgiveness, repayment, scholarships, and grants. The student debt crisis is real, and it's affecting the livelihood of our members. Our members need help, and to help our member dentists succeed, I encourage you to get involved and take action to help fight the student debt crisis. Thank you. Okay. 
So in those two bits of testimony, it's how we talk about the voice, the preparation. You too can sound like Vince or you can sound like Lauren as well. You need to prepare when you're going through to do that. Yes, you can bring notes and they'll say speak extemporaneously and do that. However, it is that first time into the microphone, you get a little nervous. Yes, I was too. And that was 20, wow, 22 years ago, 23 years ago when I first was at the house mic. But those are things you can do. You realize those two talks that I, they gave were a minute and 42 and a minute 55 overall. And you can get a lot packed into there. You also don't want to rush. This is one thing for those who know me. I can speak very quickly, but I do need to take my time because I want you to understand. Cut some of that fluff out of that talk when you're giving it and just hit those highlights like we, I talked about earlier. Give that point. Read that testimony to somebody in your component. Say, what did you hear? That's a great practice to do at your pre-caucus meeting. Any questions you all have right now on testimony based on that? Anything you can see or ideas that you might have? And the chat is always available to you. And I'll just keep going and watch that chat. So third part on here tonight that we have is an engaged pre-caucus meeting. Prepare for success in the House of Delegates. Now within this, take a look at that map. Where are you on that map? Um, I know where I am and through there, but we have a number of components on here today. Uh, as well. And you can see how those regions and everything breaks down uh, for where all those groups get together or caucus uh, for what we have. So let's go ahead and we'll start on here because I think really your preparation is going to get your the success done at the house. And I'm glad to hear that some components are already meeting and talking about their resolutions for what they want to do. That's fabulous. That's what you should be doing. So at your pre-house meeting for your caucus, you know Obviously, review all the, the resolutions and any of the association reports that are coming before the House this year. How about this? Prepare before you get to the meeting, people. Do that. Read through them. I know there'll be another group coming out. We have some already on the website. There'll be more coming out probably later this week that you'll be able to get. Um, and we'll get talk about that more in a few minutes, too. When you get to the caucus, go through and talk about this. Discuss and debate the resolutions. Evaluate the pros and the cons uh, for what are before you and what your decision is gonna make, any questions that you might have. There it is, if you, need any, uh, if you have any questions that come up, need clarification, reach out to the MDA team or the Board of Trustees. Um, you know, This is one thing that anybody who has talked or seen one of my talks in the past is always inviting your Board of Trustees members to attend, whether virtually or in person, one of your board meetings. If you wanna have somebody there at your caucus meeting, invite someone then as well, or by phone, you could reach out to somebody and do it virtually or through on the screen here as well, through a Zoom but having somebody available that you can get questions answered if you're not sure on a resolution where something is going on with the association at that point. So the big question to ask here too is with any of these resolutions, is this resolution best for the Michigan Dental Association? That's the group that we're all there for, but answer that question as well as you take a look at everything. And also go through and take a look at a resolution and go, all right, I like this, but I don't like that. Is there something I want to change within that resolution? And it's called amending a resolution. And these happen, you know, at every house of ours. We haven't had it. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. I know the American Dental Association is one of the things that I enjoy doing and we work on when we're there, if we need to make a change to a resolution. But if we need to modify, and this can happen before we get to the House of Delegates, if somebody has an idea and they want to reach out to myself or Michelle Nichols Cruz our governance manager, and you're saying, we want to amend this resolution that could be submitted ahead of time. We can have that before us as well. Those are things that we can take a look at. And last, big thing to figure out, are you in favor or are you against a resolution? This one says opposed, opposed is a fancier way, but if, are you in favor or opposed to the resolution as a group or as an individual? If you have to go through and take a, a vote amongst the group and decide what is the stance of your caucus or your your district gonna be on a resolution. You also probably should take these not only for yourself and your caucus you meet in, but your own component. Doesn't matter where you're from, if you're from Southwestern, or if you're from Lakeland, or if you're from Northeastern, or from Gogeep, I don't care. You need to figure out for your locals how they're feeling as well. It's not, just not you. You represent that group and your component for how you're getting there to the MDA House of Delegates. Let's move on. So during your caucus, there may be ideas that your caucus would like to bring forward to the House of Delegates for discussion and potential adoption. 
So this is once you go through those resolutions, you go, is there anything else that anybody has ideas or did you read something that was in there you want to bring before uh, the house to talk about? So this is where I use the word resolution. Resolution, the fancy term is, it's a substantive proposal presented to the House of Delegates for consideration, discussion, decision, and action. So, you know, talk about it, discuss it more, make a decision, and then take action. That's what a resolution is there for. So the House of Delegate has the power to advise the board regarding any matter of importance. So for those who've been in the House or not been in the House, I just want to review. If the House brings a resolution, and you'll see this actually in some of the resolutions that are going to be coming out or that are already on the website for you to look at, resolutions from the House of Delegates to the Board of Trustees should have an urge as the House in this situation, advisory to the board. So it urges the board of trust, the Michigan Dental Association Board of Trustees to. Okay, so I'm just gonna, uh, this is one example that we put on there. So proposed resolutions, you can read, resolve that the House of, Delegate, House of Delegates urges the Michigan Dental Association Board of Trustees to use its reserve funds to purchase a location in Lansing for the purpose of legislative affairs and hire a design firm for the renovation of the location. So it has the urge to the board to do something. And that's what you're urging them to do. So that's how we can write those. And if anybody has those, please reach out and we can help you create those. Do we just need to have your idea on what you're looking to do? One other thing to make sure is to check um, if you're coming up with a, an existing association policy, or you have a policy you're bringing, is check and see that if there's already an existing association poly, policy that addresses the concern that you're having. Great minds think alike, and you know what? Maybe someone had that thought before, but there's a whole association policy, and you can go right to the website and pull those all down and take a look at all the association policy manual there. Um, everything is in there through the House of Delegates. You can pull every single one of ours up from bylaws to ethics, association policy, house manual, board manual. Everything is right there on the MDA website for you to take a look at. So as I said before, if you are looking to create any new resolution or amend a current resolution, please reach out to myself and, and, and Michelle Nichols Cruz for assistance. We're here to help in getting you through and having a successful House of Delegates. Uh, that's what's most important to me. Make sure you understand and you've got your voices heard. So let me fire through some more information here for you. It's not too much overload. It's pretty much what are you doing in three days when you're in Grand Rapids, okay? Uh, first, you can go through. Please sign up. Or this is the in-person, it says part of the leadership track, uh, but this is for on parliamentary skills. So what I didn't cover tonight, a number of other things that we will be more in-person on how to amend resolutions when they're at the House floor. I probably will talk about testimony. I probably won't have uh, that examples that we had there as well from uh, Drs. Benavania and Vanderhoof for you again. Uh, but as well, uh, we will have this and it'll be an hour long on parliamentary steps, what to do, how to process motions, uh, best mechanisms for making any changes as well, uh, and just answering questions. Also, we'll talk about voting techniques too. We've done that in the past as well. Next day. So if you want to put this in your schedule, go ahead. It's on the website as well. Everything is on there, actually including uh, with estimated times for our um, House of Delegates meetings, for the agenda, the Committee on Credentials, Rules, and Order uh, has that all set. Uh, so our first meeting will start at the House of Delegates at 8.30 in the morning. 8.30 in the morning, the gavel goes down. Whatever time, it's 8.30 by my watch. So be there early. Get checked in. I'd always recommend getting about 15, 20 minutes. Heck, I'll probably be there at 7 o'clock. But you can get in there and get your seat. Uh, find your place where you're at. Uh, grab a seat. Have your beverage. Be sitting down at your chair at 8.30, ready to go when the gavel comes down. Following that, as I said, there'll be the candidate forum. Typically, that first house meeting takes about two hours. We'll reset and move into the candidate forum after that, and that will be for uh, any for the board of trustees, uh, for anyone running for those positions, and if we have any contested elections for president-elect, for speaker, for secretary, treasurer, uh, for those as well, or for editor, if we have any contested elections, that will be um, there as well. Um, and then following that, we'll have the reference committee will meet, which we uh, anticipate being typically about a 12 p.m. start as well. And then the executive session follows that for the reference committee. Now, in the interim between the candidate forum and the reference committee, there is time and set aside, and we will have lunch available for everybody, uh, box lunch in through there, and that'll be available in the back of the room. 
and we'll announce those times. But one thing to remember, it is we, it's not a hangout three martini lunch folks that we want to keep moving. Uh, we do need to turn this room over back to Andrea Sunderman and her team uh, for the keynote speaker. They need that room. So we are not dawdling around. We'll keep moving through that. So let's move on to the sixth. In on the sixth, so on Saturday, uh, regional caucus meetings have kind of a staggered start depending on what times they were looking for. They start at 8.30 a.m. Uh, with all those, I will be reaching out to the um, chairs for the different caucuses that are meeting by um, probably by email. I want to reach out to them because I'd like to get my assigned times to drop in and answer any questions. Uh, because when we're at DeVos and when we're there, sometimes it's a challenge between where the room, room assignments are and finding everybody. Usually I'll do a dry run through so I know where everyone's at but I want to make sure I get time set aside so I can come and answer any questions regarding voting resolutions, what's come out if I to speak about anything regarding the um, reference committee. If people have parliamentary questions, I know I'll get stopped in the hallway on Friday. On Saturday as well, more than happy to serve and answer those questions for you too. Uh, and that's in those regional meetings. After that, uh, by one o'clock, be there sitting in your chair. The second day as well, we'll have the voting machines will be in place. As well, we'll have those all ready to go. Uh, you will have to scan and go through with our um, team at the front to go through to get checked in. So you get your voting machine, you go sit down, and you're going to stay there. So this one, I, I'm going to tell you, get there early because it does create a bottleneck sometimes. Uh, we do our best. We have a really good system uh, for getting 102 people in there. Uh, but that's the one thing we need to watch for. And so I will remind you all of that on the, ca the caucus meeting too. Uh, just be prepared uh, and have your cards ready. Last part, following the end of that meeting, there is another Board of Trustees meeting that follows a half hour following conclusion of the second meeting of the House of Delegates. So that is what comes up on those days. So we've got the Wednesday night with the CE. You do get CE uh, for that one. Uh, then we'll have the Thursday meeting. And you see all those other meetings. Then we have the Saturday meetings. Typically, and I didn't bring this up earlier, um, usually by about 4.30, 5 o'clock, depending on how much is there. And it could go later. Um, as well from the reference committee from their executive session. Their report typically is out Friday morning. Um, the MDA team headed by Michelle Nichols Cruz is working on that to get it done. Um, Michelle sequesters herself to her room and she gets everything typed up and it's all completed and then emailed out as well to you. So you'll usually have that on Friday. And then I can get text and anything else in, from the folks who are on the reference committee and reach out to those in your component. If you When you see that group, they are all from all around our state, and you can ask questions and find out what you know from where if they had any perspective on that. And usually within that report from the reference committee, it does have a discussion as to what they thought and why they why they made a certain recommendation of adopt, not adopt, um, to go through and refer or to some adopt something in lieu of. So, all right, I'm going to come out of this now with any questions that I can answer for you. And I'm always good with none, but as well, you all have, and I'm looking at this group, most everybody has my cell number already, but if not, Michelle's going to go through, and the important part I want to let you all know too, um, is that we will go through into all who had signed up for this. We're going to send out both. You'll have the link that's going to be on, the, these are both on the website, this one. And for those who are new alternates, new delegates, if you didn't get a chance to watch the video that I'd done back in June, which was designed specifically for new alternates and delegates, that one, we'll get that link sent out so you can see that right to the website. So if you want to fall asleep at night, by the way, it's great material for doing that. I am really boring at that point. No, it's not. It's exciting to me. So I find my thrills that way. Any questions? Any statements? I know Michelle Jurigat is going to make a resolution now. No. All right. If not, I will tell you, I truly look forward to seeing you all on Wednesday, May 3rd, 5 o'clock. And I, oh, that other part, Michelle was going <laughs> to, Michelle will tell me if I, if I miss this. So that meeting at 5 o'clock, it's from 5 until 7 is what we have on that Wednesday, May 3rd. From 5 to 6 is a meet the candidates. So anyone running for the ADA House of Delegates, anyone running for elected office for the Board of Trustees or for the trustee positions, uh, those will, um, they're invited as well. So come and meet those people that you'll be voting for coming up on the Thursday or for the Saturday as well. That's a great opportunity to meet them. That'll be from five until six. My talk will go from six until seven uh, with that one. Following seven, you are all invited 
uh, to the Sparkling Smiles event put on by MDA Foundation. That's uh, not that far away. That'll be in the Pantland Ballroom, I believe. So hopefully we're not too far from getting over to them. And so that'll be the one part of that evening. Uh, I know usually I start getting, um, and I think there we go. I see where she got that. And everyone is invited to that with the Sparkling Smiles. Thank you, Sue. Um, but that event is uh, one that is uh, a great event to go through and celebrate what's going on with the foundation. All right. Well, seeing there we go. Sue's got it in the chat. And I think, Michelle, if we if we can put a link on ours as well to this to encourage people to attend that, that'd be great. So thank you for having me. Sue, we'll put that on what our email goes out. Um, always with that one, a great event celebrating the past year. And also make sure you can help with the coming year for what's going on in the foundation too. So again, look forward to seeing you all in 38 days, actually 37, because I want to see you there on the Wednesday night. And have a great evening. And make sure if you have any questions, always reach out to Michelle or myself. We're more than happy to help. Thanks a lot.